Hey, screeners, how you doing? It's me, the one AJ, Anthony Jordan. And me, Nico Luro. And if you'll click on this video, it's because either you've seen this obscure movie uh, and or you're here for a classic movie review and to learn about a movie you maybe haven't seen. AJ, Ooh, how does your show work? Oh, we're celebrating a zero for a, 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 a decade birthday for a film. By a decade, I mean this film this week is celebrating a big zero. Is it a 10? Is it a 20? Is it a 30? Is it a 40 or beyond? When the show first started, guys, this is why we're so, I, I kind of hesitate because it started off as 10, 20 or 30. Sometimes we go beyond. If a film yeah. needs to be celebrated and it's got a big zero birthday, hell, it could even be a one double zero. You might have two zeros at the end of it, but we've not got there yet. And yeah, that's what we're doing. We're just celebrating great films or trash and bad films that are having a birthday this, this week. So I have no clue. You guys know what it is. I'm literally entering a studio that says TBT. <laughs> That's all it says. For AJ me. never knows what the movie is. That's part of the joy of the show. The reaction you see is the organic reaction of, oh, that's quite old, isn't it? Yeah. AJ, this week we're going, we're not going back 10. We're not going back 20. We're going back 30 years. Oh, oh yes, we are. For 30 the years. 1994. Mm. Good year for movies. Uh, have we done like yeah. it? and a box of chocolates? Um, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, I, was, I, I thought that came out this week. I was like, Oh, I'm ready to talk. No, no, sadly, <laughs> <laughs> not, man. Um, dude, it's it's one I've brought up not a lot, but I have brought it up in the in the movie Mount Rushmore top 10 topic time. It's um. An animated movie I watched a lot as a child, 30 years old, AJ. It hasn't aged well, certainly, but I'll talk about that in a moment. 30 years old is Thumbelina. Oh, you see, this, now this is a, an interesting one because it has been something that you've brought up over the years. I think this could go back to... the pod season one i wouldn't say youtube season one of silver screen did but pod season one and i remember us discussing like the fumbelinas and the tom thumbs and if i've seen it it's such a fly-by moment for me it's not something that sticks in my head because i'm very familiar with who fumbelina is it may be mm. because of my childhood books so i'm not too sure here the poster didn't ring a bell that's one thing i will say mm. here's here's a frustrating thing with fumbelina for me because i as a child, love this movie. Um, it's a very basic story. There's this old lady who never had children, and she's gifted a child who's the size of her thumb, a.k.a. Thumbelina. She's a funny little squirt. Um, <laughs> and Thumbelina gets kidnapped by the frogs. There's a fairy prince who's after her, um, who she really fancies. They go for romantic fly around on his bumblebee and sing one of the great sorry 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 so there are more thumb sized people within this film fairies okay the fairies uh there are fairies that uh befriend her at least the fairy prince does takes her for a spin to the song let me be your wings which i don't care Yes, you get an F-boy alert when you see the fairy prince. Like, hard F-boy alert. <laughs> but the reality is, is that the song Let Me Be Your Wings is an absolute banger of a song. I sing it to my daughter now. I don't care. It's great. It makes her happy too. Um, but yeah, things bad things happen to Thumbelina. She gets kidnapped by frogs, by the by the by the beetles. Um, not Ringo and no, okay. no actual <laughs> beetles. <laughs> not Ringo and all those lot. And act the yeah, actual no, beetles. Not, eh? Harrison before people were like, how dare you quote Ringo Starr as the one? I'm just yeah, exactly. Out, sorry. Yeah, Small John tangent. And Paul he and was the voice of Thomas the Tank Engine in the UK, and that's why I quoted Ringo first. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and um, she gets married off to a mole, a blind mole at that, on the basis of marrying him for money. And here, herein lies the problem: is that you've got all these various sects of the little miniature animal kingdom that are after her 
on the basis of, well, she's really, really pretty. And it's like, Ooh. yeah, I know it thematically has not aged well thereafter her because she pretty. And then the song, dude, when I rewatched it, I was like, oh dear, this has not aged well at all. There's a song which even back then it was meant to be like, this is an evil person, but there are lyrics in the song which go, marrying for love is a stupid thing to do because love won't pay your mortgage or put porridge in your bowl. Marry them all. And it's like, oh, this has not aged well at all. In an age where we're all about preaching independence and being strong and providing for yourself as well as for the ones you love. Can't believe it. I think you're a gold digger. But she ain't messing with them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Digger. There we go. <laughs> a blind digger. There, well done. <laughs> we, we made it work. Yeah, there are things which um oh, and the Beatles sing a song about her when they reject her, when and their reasons for rejecting her. Oh, Iago, uh Gilbert Godfrey, he's one of the big voices in this. He plays one of the I'm sorry, Tots, I guess you're too Ooh, ugly. It's like, really? And then she's having a breakdown about the beetle called me ugly. And then the French sparrow comes and goes, like, Do you love the beetle? No. Then good riddance to the beetle. Good riddance to the toad. Does Prince Cornelius think you are ugly? No, he thinks I'm beautiful. And then he makes her put her head down and look in the reflection. And so you are, mon chéri. Look. <laughs> And then she's like, I am beautiful. I'm going home. And it's like, oh, this has not aged well. This has not aged well. Uh, this commentary here should not be mentioned in a Fumbelina conversation, but we are two nearly 40-year-old men. There was a point where my eyes nearly jumped out of my head when you're like, oh, so you're beautiful. And he just takes her head and pushes down. I was like, he done what? <laughs> Reflection in the river. You <laughs> said that, I had such a deep breath of whoo. Okay. <laughs> oh well, that was a good moment. I think we should watch the trailer and move swiftly <laughs> on it. Let's bring it back to Charles. Let's bring it back to Charles. Oh dear. Oh dearie me. Oh, he pushes her down. He done what? <laughs> Here's a trailer for Thumbelina. Yeah. Yeah, the screen's just moved. Yeah, the time go. in a land far, far away. Tiny little sports. Very small girl, no bigger than a thumb. I wish I were big. Don't ever wish to be anything but what you are. See, at this point, it's doing a good message. Of finding her one true love. Me, love. This song is a banger. But before her very prince could claim her heart. She's getting married to fairy prince. Well, perhaps. And then she gets kidnapped from her home. Thumbelina's gone. Who did it? A toad. And lost to a very big world. Find her. You are going to marry my son? No, no, no. Thumbelina! I hear that she loves the fairy prince, right? <laughs> Are you really gonna marry the fairy prince? Yes. Well, then follow your heart. It will keep you the home. French your shot will do impossible things. From the enchanting pages of Hans Christian Andersen's storybook classic uh -oh. and the imagination of Don Blue. This is it. It's Hans Christian Andersen. It's Don Bluth. Like, there's all these really good things behind it, but oh, it has age. By the music of Barry Manilow. Oh. Barry Manilow. That's who did the song. Bible does that. Thumbelina. Nothing is impossible if you follow your heart. Hola, guys. I mean. Ay, ay. There so are some things. Thing, yeah. Like watching the trailer, there's so many things. And I'm, I, I, I say this without any disrespect to current voice actors. And I mean it like none whatsoever. 
but there is just a certain magic. Maybe it's just a nostalgia buzz that you get. But that small little, are you really going to marry the prince? It just uh, it the, the, the voice acting you would get back then is, I think it was so. Dare I say more innocent back then, and the eighties, nineties was just so extravagant. Everything was further emphasized. It? Yeah, and you know. Don Bluth animation is just something I, I I just love to see. Just just me too. I it. love it's the Don Bluth good. animation studio. I'm with you on that, brother. I think they yeah. do great stuff. Yeah, the animation is great. The original story by Hans Christian Andersen is obviously great. There are some good themes in it. Like, don't ever wish to be more than anything that you are. And then it goes weird. There's bad themes in this, and I know that some of them are very much like pointed out as being bad. Some of them aren't and should be. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but despite that, because I had, oh, I'm such a hypocrite. I had so much enjoyment with it as a child. I spent many a happy weekend on my dearly departed great grandmother's sofa watching this movie. It doesn't get one thumb, it gets two. I don't care that it's aged. I love this film. Listen, there are some things like, uh, <laughs> I did, we brought him up already. I can't remember. We've done so many reviews now. Let's go for Ace. Like, there is a point where people are going to be like, it's this, it's that, the other. It's fun. I enjoy it. I will not say anything otherwise. And it's the same here. If you had a good time with the film, okay, I may not agree with every beat and word of it, but as long as it's not inherently racist, sexist, or anything else, like, you can still sit back and enjoy it. You may not agree with everything, but it's not diminishing up people. Oh, no, okay. it's not diminishing, but it really doesn't put women on a very high pedestal. This movie, like, wow, <laughs> two stars, <laughs> seven stars in the Tokyo Dome. <laughs> oh, seven stars in the Tokyo Dome. Well done. Good, good work on that one. Oh, god, yeah. Look, there are things that really, especially now as a father of a little girl, make me go, Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> before she was born, I was like, oh, I can't wait to show her that, yada, yada, yada. And then I rewatched it, you know, because you have to do parental safe viewing experience. Now, is this okay for my baby girl? And then you look at it and go, <laughs> No. But I will show my son. No, I'm joking. I will show my son, yes. Only go for the pretty girls who want money. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> Guys, what did you think of Thumb Melina? Have you seen it? And what did you think of it? Let us know down below. Like the video if you haven't done so already. Please do subscribe to our channel and help us keep growing. We're over 20,000 subscribers now. Thanks to all of you. We appreciate you. But that's it for now until another classic review. I'm Nico Lero. He's AJ. See ya.